Hello viewers, welcome to this video. We are seeing the question paper of anatomy asked by KUHS in October 2019. This section deals with part C of the same question paper. This section will cover answer key of these short notes. The questions were structure of breast, describe the pancreas, structure of urinary bladder, pleura, and paranasal air sinuses. The first question, question number four, under short note, structure of breast. It is good to write few sentences as an introduction. Here it is written. The breasts are paired structures located on anterior thoracic wall in the pectoral region. They are present in both males and females, yet are prominent in females following puberty. In this image, you can see the structure of breast consists of pectoralis major muscle, then pectoralis fascia, retromammary face, the skin covering the breast tissue. And the internal structure of breast consists of fatty matrix, suspensory ligament attaching the breast tissue to the pectoralis fascia, then glandular tissue. You can see different gl mammary glands here, and you can see the lobe. The lobe is situ situated in between suspensory ligament. Then there is areola and there is nipple. Smaller ductiferous duct you can see in each mammary gland or each lobule. Different lactiferous duct from different lobule join together and form main lactiferous duct. Main lactiferous duct from different lobules or lobes join together and form lactiferous sinus that opens into the nipple. About the details of this structure, you can see in the video of breast that is available in this channel. Next, you have to write about the surface anatomy of breast. You have to describe the surface anatomy under these subheadings. That is location. Location of breast is between lateral border of sternum to mid axillary line. Then between second and sixth intercostal cartilages. Then superficially it is situated to the pectoralis major and serratus anterior muscle. The regions of the breast include circular body and axillary tail. The details of which you have to write in the answer sheet. Next in your answer sheet, mention about four quadrants of breast. The four quadrants are upper, outer, upper, inner, lower, inner and lower, outer. These quadrants are made after drawing two imaginary lines. One is this one, the other is this one through the center of the nipple. Next mention about the internal structure under this heading. The mammary glands, the connective tissue stroma including the ligaments of Cooper, the duct system of breast, pectoral fascia and vitro mammary space. The descriptions are available in the video. Next you have to write about the vasculature. The vasculature includes arteries and the vein. The key points are the artery supplying the medial aspect of breast is internal mammary artery. The lateral part of the breast is supplied by four arteries namely lateral thoracic and a thoracoacromian branches of axillary artery, lateral mammary branches of posterior intercostal artery and mammary branches of anterior intercostal artery. The veins are axillary and internal thoracic vein. Let's mention about the lymphatics. We Groups of lymph nodes that drain the breast tissue include axillary nodes, parasternal nodes and a posterior intercostal nodes. Next mention about the nerve supply. The breast is innervated by anterior and lateral cutaneous branches of 4th to 6th intercostal nerves. That is about the answer key of structure of the breast. A detailed video of the breast is available in this channel. Please visit the video or watch the video and take down the notes for further describing your answer. Next short note is describe the pancreas. Write an introduction in one or two sentences. Here it is written, pancreas is an abdominal glandular organ with a digestive or exocrine and hormonal or endocrine functions. 
about the size and shape of pancreas it is about 12 to 15 in centimeter long lobulated and salmon colored in appearance the shape is oblong shape next you have to draw the structure of pancreas as drawn in this picture the pancreas has a tail a body the neck head and the asinate process this structure you have to draw in your answer sheet next about this structure you have to explain under these headings head asinate process neck body and tail you have to describe it after description you have to mention about the exocrine pancreas exocrine pancreas is that part of the pancreas which perform digestive role exocrine pancreas consists of asini you have to draw the structure of asini in your answer booklet the asini consists of different asinar cells then near to the center of asinar cell you can see cymogen granule then from the center of asini you can see intercalated duct different intercalated duct from different asini join together and form intralobular collecting duct each asini is supplied by capillaries also after writing about exocrine pancreas in your answer sheet write about endocrine pancreas you can see the endocrine pancreas consists of islets of langerhans and this is the picture of islets of langerhans it consists of alpha beta theta and f cells alpha cells secrete glucagon beta cells insulin theta cells somatostatin and f cells secrete pancreatic polypeptides next draw the picture of duct system in pancreas the duct system consists of pancreatic duct the pancreatic duct is formed by different interlobular ducts the pancreatic duct joins with the common bile duct and it form ampulla of waiter and opens into duodenum at the duodenal papilla this structure you have to draw and write the description next about the anatomical position of pancreas it is a retroperitoneal organ located in the epigastrium and left hypochondriac region it has direct anatomical relation to several structures next to mention about the pancreas relation you can see here the structures anteriorly to the pancreas superior to pancreas lateral on right lateral on left and posterior to pancreas out of the structures the main important structures you have to write in your answer sheet about the vasculature of pancreas the artery is the pancreatic branches of splenic artery and pancreatic duodenal arteries the veins the hepatoportal vein and the pancreatic vein lymphatics include pancreatico splenal nodes and pyloric nodes about the clinical relevance the condition affected pancreas are pancreatitis pancreatic cancers and diabetes mellitus this is about the answer key of pancreas again the detailed video are available in this channel please watch the video to expand your answer further coming to the sixth question that is structure of urinary bladder here you can see the structure of urinary bladder it consists of ureter lateral umbilical ligament ureteral opening internal sphincter external sphincter prostatic urethra in male and the prostatic gland trigone and rugae also you have to explain about urethras this structure you have to draw in your answer sheet and explain about each labeled part the external features of the bladder include when full it exhibits an oval shape and when empty it is flattened by the overlying bubble the external features you have to describe in terms of apex body pondus neck and trigone next you have to draw the picture of bladder wall the bladder wall consists of transitional epithelium lamina propria submucosa and the drusal muscle after drawing this picture you have to describe about transitional epithelium lamina propria submucosa and the drusal muscle then write about the musculature the muscular the the musculature of bladder or the muscles of bladder are the drusal muscle internal urethral sphincter 
that is different in male and female and external urethral sphincter. Give discussion about these muscles. Next, write about the vasculature. The key points are arterial supply is via superior vesicle artery, obturator artery and inferior gluteal artery. The venous drainage is achieved by vesicle venous plexus. For the lymphatics, the key points are superior lateral aspect is drained into external iliac lymph node. The neck and fundus are drained into internal iliac, sacral and common iliac nodes. The nerve supply comes from sympathetic hypogastric nerve, parasympathetic pelvic nerve, somatic pudendal nerve, sensory nerves and bladder stretch reflex. This is the end of structure of urinary bladder. Coming to the seventh question that is the, the pleura. The pleura refer to the serous membrane that line the lungs and thoracic cavity. After writing the definition, go to the structure of pleura. There are two pleura in the body, one associated with each lung. Each pleura can be divided into visceral pleura and parietal pleura. Then draw this picture. This is the visceral pleura covering the lung and this is the parietal pleura the outer layer of the pleural membrane. Coming to the explanation of parietal pleura. The parietal pleura covers the internal surface of the thoracic cavity and it has mediastinal pleura, cervical pleura, costal pleura and diaphragmatic pleura. This is the image of different parts of parietal pleura. You can see here cervical, costal, mediastinal and diaphragmatic. You have to explain about these parts visit the video available in this channel about the pleura. Next you have to write about the visceral pleura. The key point is it is attached to the surface of the lung. Other characteristics are, are explained in the video. Then write about the pulmonary ligament. The key point is parietal pleura surrounding the root of the lung extend downwards beyond the root as a fold called a pulmonary ligament. Write about the neurovascular supply. The parietal pleura is supplied by phrenic and intercostal nerve and the intercostal artery. The visceral pleura is supplied by pulmonary plexus and artery is bronchial arteries. Lymphatic drainage. Parietal pleura are drained into intercostal, internal mammary, posterior mediastinal and diaphragmatic nodes. With the visceral pleura is drained by bronchopulmonary lymph nodes. Next, write about the pleural recess. The pleura has two recesses, costal diaphragmatic and costal medial, mediastinal. The details are available in the video. Next, mention about the pleural cavity. It is a potential space between parietal and the visceral pleura. It contains a small volume of serous fluid. That is the end of discussion about pleura. Please visit or watch the video for further details and expansion of your answer. The eighth short note was about paranasal air sinuses. Paranasal air sinuses are air filled extensions of nasal cavity. There are four paired sinuses. They are named according to the bone in which they are located. The four sinuses are maxillary, frontal, sphenoidal, and ethmoidal. After mentioning this much, we go to after mentioning this about the sinuses, you have to draw the picture of sinuses. You can see here, this is the frontal sinus, this is ethmoid sinus, this is maxillary sinus and this is sphenoid sinus. This picture you have to draw in your answer booklet. Next, explain about each sinus. The key points about frontal sinuses are written here. There are two frontal sinuses. They are located within the frontal bone, shaped triangular, position superior most of all sinuses. Drained by frontal nasal duct. Sensation is by supra orbital nerve. Arterial supply is via anterior ethmoidal artery. Sphenoid sinus. They are located within, within the body of sphenoid bone. Open to sphenoid ethmoidal recess. Innervated by posterior ethmoidal nerve. And arterial supply is from maxillary arteries. For the clinical relevance of sphenoid sinus. There is a surgical technique called transphenoidal surgery. The pituitary can be accessed surgically by passing instruments through the sphenoid bone and the sinus. About the ethmoidal sinus, they are located within the ethmoid bone. There are 
anterior ethmoidal sinus, middle ethmoidal sinus, and posterior ethmoidal sinus. They are innervated by nasociliary nerve and maxillary nerve. Anterior and posterior ethmoidal arteries are responsible for arterial supply. Coming to the fourth sinus, that is maxillary sinus. They are the largest of all sinus. They are located laterally and inferior to nasal cavity. They drain into nasal cavity via hiat at hiatus semilunaris. For the clinical relevance of paranasal sinuses, there is a condition called a sinusitis, that is inflammation of the mucosa. If more than one sinus is affected, it is called a pan-sinusitis. For the details, visit the videos on paranasal sinus. That is the end of this section. Thanks for watching. Please support this channel by your valuable subscription, suggestion and sharing. Thanks once again.